喂喂，这样可以啊。好，后面可以听得见吗？对，只要所有的只要一发。
Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon. No matter where you are, no matter who you are, welcome to this ICANX Talks platform. Actually, this was、uh, already one year. We have invited more than hundred speakers on this stage. We use、uh, science talks to connect the world and the universe. This was a beautiful, you know, talks series. Already attract more than ten. Million, you know, audience from all over the world. So we are very proud to have all this series. And this week is a special week. You see that I must look a little bit different. Yeah, as normally, you know, I, I can act. The colors was the blue, but this time was red because this week is a special week. We are here as not in Beijing. We are in Xiamen this week. Uh, this week we have the biggest conference of IHP NAMS in Xiamen University.、Uh, this conference was already since 16 years. So this year was the biggest one in the history. So we have a lot of people attend this conference on site, and we also have a lot of people attend the conference online. So this hybrid、uh, conference make a big difference, and、uh, we attract many, many, you know, speakers from a whole over the world. We also have attract many, many young students and young scholars to join into this field. So we are really proud of that. So this picture was a lovely picture we took it a few days ago. So yeah, you see that's a beautiful Xiamen University, and、uh, why we choose Xiamen University? Why this conference can be so successful? Because this year was a hundred years anniversary of Xiamen University. This was a big celebration. This also was a historical, you know, glory history pass. So we can see that from this short video, please. <laughs> Okay, yeah. As you see, this beautiful movie is very exciting. We see that the next hundred years will start since this time. Yes, it is. So to celebrate this big adventure, you know, uh, a, a ceremony. So we have this special issue for a Xiamen University. So we invited a few of the famous professors here. We invited some students here to celebrate this big uh a celebration together. So first came to the stage is a young professor. Now his name is Yang. He looks very young, but his scientific contribution is like a sunrise inside. Okay, Professor Chao Yong, please. Thank you, Alice, for your introduction and、uh, for organizing for this uh, special uh, uh, forum. And、um, I'm really honored to be part of this uh, 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 event. And good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. And、um, actually, I was、uh, it's been a half for a quarter century、uh, since I became a part of Xiamen University. So I'm really proud of the rich culture 
and glorious history, and um, also remarkable contribution of this university. So I would like to take this uh, opportunity to wish Xiamen University a flourish and successful 100 years to come. So today I'd like to uh, share you our recent uh, uh, research progress in the effort to uh, making microbiotic tools to detect uh, uh, cancer uh, in a non-invasive way. So this is the outline of my talk. First, I would like to give you a brief introduction of liquid biopsy and circulating tumor cells. And uh, then I will talk about how we use microfluidic tools to discover recognition probes or optimus for uh, circulating tumor cell recognition. And I'll show you our, our microfluidic devices for highly sensitive enrichment of CTCs from patients' blood. In the last part of my talk, I spent more time discussing how we use droplet microfluidics for single cell sequencing. So, um, so you think circulating tumor cells are cancer cells detect from primary tumor site. They can get access to a circulating system and transit to a distant organ and survive at a secondary site and form cancer metastasis. And a great deal of clinical evidence has proven that these uh, uh, CDCs are useful biomarker for cancer diagnosis, process, and therapeutic assessment. So uh, it can be used as a, a key marker for uh, 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 liquid biopsy. So liquid biopsy is a new and non-invasive technique that detects diseases, uh, include biomarkers including CTCs, CD8 DNA, exosomes in uh, blood, urine, and other body fluids. And we know that uh, a golden standard for cancer diagnosis is tissue biopsy, and it's really painful, and it's invasive, and cannot be done regularly. But if you have a way to just drop, uh, drop some blood and detect those biomarkers and can detect uh, cancer, then it will be an alternative, long uh, uh, invasive uh, way uh, for cancer diagnosis. Unfortunately, in order to push the CTC-based liquid biopsy for clinical applications, there are a few challenges we have to address. First of all, those CTCs usually uh, uh, present in real, uh, real copies. For example, in one meal of blood, you only have less than 100 of uh, CTCs. While for background cells, you have about billions of the cells. So fund Funding those real cells in such a huge normal background cells is like a funding a little in a haystack. Another challenge for CTC detection is those CTCs are usually heterogeneous, which means one cell is totally different from the other cell. So traditional way to analyze cells with a, a power analysis to the average cell to cell variation. So it would lose a lot of the uh, disease information. So we have to analyze those cells one by one. So we have to develop sensitive tools to analyze those CTCs. So we have taken integrated strategy for CTC analysis, including developing new capturing probes and device to capture CTCs and release them with high viability. We also developed a single cell characterization methods that we can uh, uh, dissect the molecule uh, information so that like we can identify tissue origin of those CTCs and also perform drug screening and cancer processes. So uh, one main task is how do we differentiate cancer cells from normal cells? So we rely, rely on a recognition probe called aptamus. Basically, they are typical uh, uh, antibodies. They are oligodeucotide that can bind to specific target interests with high specificity and high affinity. And they can fold to, like an antibody can fold to uh, 3D or secondary structure to uh, compatible with the uh, target interest to, to, for high affinity. So they can create from selection from a last lab random uh, a sequence pool. In addition to high affinity and high selectivity, there are all advantages of using optimum for CTC enrichment, including they are considerable, synthesizable, and they are widely stable in wide range of pH uh, heating conditions and organic solvents. You can easily conjugate them to some solid surface without worrying about loss of their binding activity. And finally, because of the secondary structure of these uh, uh, 
uh, optimus can be easily modulated through chemical or biological way, so we can easily release the uh, uh, CTCs with high viability. And high viability of CTCs is really important for downstream analysis, including culture or uh, RNA analysis. Um, but before we jump into this field, uh, actually, there are only a few copies of uh, uh, optimus available for CTC recognition. And the reason uh, of that is that uh, optimal selection actually is a time-consuming, tedious, and expensive process to, to do. Usually, it involves two steps. One step is enrichment. Uh, another step is screening. So in the enrichment, we create a huge DNA library, uh, which is about 10 to 13 to 10 to 15 sequence as a starting library. Then we incubate our target entries with the library and uh, repeat uh, uh, incubation, participation, and application process until our active binding sequence is enriched, which usually take about 20 to 30 runs. If you are lucky enough, you may be able to uh, enrich the library in uh, a few weeks, but if you work hard and not lucky, then it may take you months and uh, years to do. So after you are uh, in this library, you have to identify the exact active binding sequences from the en enriched library. You should also involve the cloning, sequencing, alignment, DNA synthesis, and screening, characterization, and so on and so forth. And it's actually it's time consuming, expensive, frequent, uh, and low uh, 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 yield uh, processes. So to address this issue, actually, we have developed several uh, selection methods to, to increase the binding, increase the uh, uh, selection efficiency and low cost. Uh, our new methods include droplet selex, surface display selex, molecule clouding selex, and AI-based uh, selex called smart selex. And for example, we uh, have developed a technology called monoclonal surface display selex, where we use the uh, microfluidic uh, to generate droplets. It's basically like a, a reactor. Uh, for in each individual droplet. The, then we can participate single molecule into this droplet and amplify its DNA on the surface of microbeads. So we can create uh, one monoclonal beads, and one bead will present one sequence. But a copy line for a sequence can be meaningless. So we can generate a, a monoclonal bead library. So we can incubate a target cell with, of interest with the library. So if the DNA display on the surface of microbeat has a binding affinity to the cell, it will become sticky. But if it is not, uh, uh, has no binding activity, it will just uh, 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 the by itself without bind to the cell of interest. So under the microscope, we can visualize the molecule interaction and pick up those active binding uh, microbeats. So that we can obtain optimal interest in a few cycles and avoid cloning, sequencing, chemical synthesis. So the whole process is really rapid and low cost and highly efficient. So through our uh, new method, we are able to identify optimus against different uh, kinds of biomarker proteins, including ECAM, uh, EGFR, PTL1, Vimentin, which are highly expressed in most uh, tumor cells. Also, we can, uh, uh, in a, uh, uh, discover optimum sequences against specific kinds of cell types. So these uh, optimum sequences were able to differentiate kinds of cells from normal cells. So the next job of us is to view the microfluidic chip so that we can isolate, enrich those uh, CTCs from the solution. So our approach is a synergistic approach. Uh, as we know, the kinds of cells are bigger and uh, its surface biomarkers are quite different from normal cells. So our synergistic approach is the size-based separation and infinity capturing. Our chip consists of the, uh, the tens the, uh, to 40,000 uh, microposts on which uh, we have uh, my, uh, optimal immobilized on its surfaces. So uh, the uh, uh, arrangement of the microposts is the, uh, designed in such a way you would allow select to enhance the uh, collision as you can see from the, the simulation experimental results, uh, big particles like a cancer cell would have a really frequent interaction with, with the microposts. And because we have recognition ligand on the microposts, uh, frequent interaction would allow efficient capture of those CTCs. While as you can see for normal cells, because of the smaller size, they can just pass through this microfluidic chip with minimal interaction. 
from this uh, simulation, we can calculate the bonding uh, uh, probability. So we can see blood cells with high bonding uh, 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 collision probability, while for white blood cells and red blood cells, you have a minimum interaction. So that you can increase the capture efficiency of CTC while enhance the capture purity because you have a minimum uh, capture efficiency for uh, normal cells. So with this chip design, we can immobilize the optimum sequence so on the microfluidic chip. We were able to differentiate cancer cells from our normal cells in buffer condition. So you can see the capture efficiency is quite good. Unfortunately, when we jump into the real blood uh, samples, as you can see, we are using optimus again in ECAM, which is highly expressed in most uh, solid tumors, and its bonding affinity is compromised by one order of magnitude, and which is not, we're not uh, able to capture a CTC with high sensitivity. So to address this issue, we proposed a concept of called multivalent optimal interface by using gold nanoparticle particle to anchor hundreds of optimal sequences. Then we can attach the gold nanoparticle particle on the microposes. Because of the microvalent, multivalent effects, we can increase the bonding affinity of our optimal by two order of magnitude so that you can uh, perform well in blood samples. But from this uh, 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 scheme, you can see optimum actually is physically attached to, to the surface of microposts and is fixed, is a static uh, 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 capturing. So learning from uh, nature, we can see the mem membrane protein actually is just flow around our cell membrane. So uh, we create a, a, a microvesicle and insert our recognition probe on the surface of the, this microvesicle. So like a recognition probe will allow you to flow around. So if it for a uh, fluid membrane uh, ladder in space. So as you can see, if a, a, go, a cell is captured uh, uh, by the surface, then the surface would recruit more optimal sequence to the bonding side. So like you can uh, 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 result in the uh, uh, multivalent bonding. So this fluidic enhanced multivalent actually significantly increase the bonding affinity. As you can see, we can increase bonding affinity uh, from 142 uh, nanomolar to uh, uh, 2 uh, uh, picomolar, which is a four order of magnitude, so that we can easily capture uh, cells in blood. And because it is a microvesicle, it create a, a, a soft 3D nano interface, so you can minimize cell to like surface interaction to for high viability. So using our uh, microfluid approach, we can accurately uh, detect or capture CTCs from different kind of uh, 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 patient sample, including colon rectal, breast cancer, uh, lung cancer, prostate cancer. And from uh, uh, localized prostate cancer patient, we can, our sensitivity was about 87%. Uh, um, percent, which is really uh, high compared to other commercial available platform. And for those CTCs, you can do release for cell culturing, for sequencing, and uh, mutation analysis, and also use the information to guide medication. So uh, this uh, show you that our uh, microfluidic chip is able to enrich CTCs with high uh, sensitivity. So next, we'd like to see how cell is different from the other cell by using droplet microfluidics. The reason why we take uh, droplet microfluidics is because there are several advantages. By droplet, I mean we are using microfluidic structure to create, create water in oil uh, droplets. And this droplet can be used as a, a unique reactor uh, to perform chemical or biochemical reaction. In this case, we just uh, uh, encapsulate single cell inside these individual droplets so we can perform single cell analysis. So the advantage of using uh, droplet microfluidics for single cell, uh, including small volume, this is like a large, little volume to picker little volume, high throughput, and minimize contamination because it's an isolated system. So uh, one of the platform we rely on is digital microfluidics. Uh, uh, basically, it's an uh, electro weighting for, uh, 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 a based uh, uh, microfluidic platform. When you apply uh, uh, voltage to, uh, on this uh, uh, hydrophobic surface, uh, you change the uh, counter angle of, of these uh, droplets. So if you change the subsequently of these two electrodes, you can basically move these droplets. So you can generate 
and split this pins and mix these uh, droplets uh, easily and automatically by programming uh, the, the, the electro, as you can see from this uh, uh, video. So this is really an automatic uh, way to uh, process uh, uh, a solution. More important, uh, the volume of this uh, droplet can be uh, as little as large liter to micro liter. It's really compatible with single cell analysis. So uh, we just create a butterfly structure uh, uh, so that we can focus and capture a uh, single cell uh, in this uh, 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 structure. So we can wash cell, release cell, and amplify cell to, to prevail uh, in a sequencing library. And this structure is universally applicable to different size of cells. And because it's a large little reactor and reaction, so you can afford efficient, uniform, and accurate application of uh, uh, DNA uh, uh, for sequencing. Similarly, we can capture single cells and perform RT and PCR to create a uh, transcript from our library so that we can do single cell RNA sequencing. And I would like to emphasize the advantage of using this uh, uh, platform uh, is the nanoliter uh, reactor because the, uh, for traditional way to do single cell analysis, the, the volume would be about 10 microliters. Uh, you, you, then uh, in the nanoliter reactor, you drop the volume by order of three to four magnitudes. So you can significantly increase the concentration of your molecule, so you can increase the sensitivity of the of sequencing. So that, as you can see, we were able to detect real genes uh, 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 from uh, in each individual cells compared to other uh, commercial uh, uh, platform. And this is really important when you are uh, discovering important genes and also uh, seeing difference between cell to cell because usually uh, those real events or real copy mRNA uh, uh, drive the, 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 to, uh, uh, driven uh, those the, uh, cell to cell variation. And recently, we were able to uh, use this microfluidic platform to isolate RNA from, R -R, from DNA and amplify it separately so that we can prepare DNA and R library. So uh, from, from each uh, uh, single cell, we can detect genome and uh, transcriptome. And this is really exciting because you can uh, see how DNA uh, correlate with the RNA expression. To further increase the throughput of our single cell on our tool, we uh, uh, recently uh, built a platform called PEL uh, Single Cell RNA Seq uh, for high throughput single cell sequencing. Um, basically, it's to uh, rely on a technology called DNA barcoding technology. So, uh, using a DNA barcoding to barcode each individual cell with a unique barcode. So, like that you would not uh, worry about mixing of transcriptome information of each individual cells. Individual cells. So that like you can process many, many cells at the same time, and uh, eventually you can, uh, um, you were able to convert and see uh, how many mRNA is the expression in each individual cells, uh, and how many copy of mRNA is present. In our technology we uh, create is called a differential fluidic resistance trapping, so that we can isolate individual cells uh, with high efficiency because for single cell analysis, it's important for you to isolate real cell, single cell, because you don't want to see two cells that are sticking together or capturing together, uh, that would not be uh, a single cell uh, information. So uh, using this technology, we are able to capture real cells and decode more than thousands of cells at the same time uh, and in which they want a sequence, sequencing run, so that you can increase the throughput and reduce the cost. So this shows the, uh, the, the principle of our differential fluidic resistance trapping. Basically, when a cell uh, goes in, you will see two passes. One is horizontal, and the other one is the U-shaped structure. So uh, you will get into this uh, capturing chamber and block the orifice, so that the uh, flow uh, rate in the uh, capturing chamber would become zero, uh, in such a way that the next cell would not get into this capturing chamber. It will just divert its direction to this U-shaped structure. So in use, based on this principle, you are able to capture single cell automatically. And because you have a, a really, uh, many, many uh, repeat units like this, so you can capture many cells at the same time. 
Uh, the figure on the right show you the design, three-layer design of this microfluidic chip. And, um, and this is uh, uh, from uh, each chip we, uh, right now we can pre uh, process uh, 800, 2,000 uh, uh, cells at the same time based on different versions. And the volume of this uh, uh, re reaction unit is less than 400 picoliter. And this would uh, afford highly sensitive uh, application. This video show you uh, uh, that the uh, experimental result that indeed we can only capture single cell, you will not see two cells at the same time being captured in the capturing chamber. And because of the design, we're able to capture cells with high efficiency and pair with the uh, uh, barcoding reagent with high efficiency, even you have really low input number of cells. And this is really important because for well, uh, a, a, a cell, like a, a CTC uh, detection, the number of cells is a limit that you cannot afford to lose them. And this is well fit for our CTC uh, detection. Another uh, 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 problem for single cell sequencing is the, uh, uh, the contamination from the free mRNA. And, and because our uh, 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 fluidic resistant design, we are able to wash out those free uh, mRNA. And if you are not able to uh, remove those free mRNA, you must cell to cell variation. So you know, basically you should see two same cells. So uh, using this uh, device, we're able to remove the free uh, uh, background mRNA so you can see clearly how one cell is different from the other cell. As you sh I show you here from a dark solution experiment and also sequencing experiment. For example, we mix the human mRNA with mouse cell and uh, perform our uh, sequencing. As you can see, we don't see any free uh, mRNA information from the human uh, 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 mRNA. And, and, and vice versa, when we mix a human cell with mouse mRNA, you only see uh, uh, human cell uh, information. So this demonstrates we, our device can efficiently remove uh, backbone mRNA. Because of the unique design of, micro, of our microfluidic chip, we can afford highly accurate sequencing and highly sensitive uh, sequencing. As low as two copy number of mRNA in each cell, we will be able to sequence it out. Another key parameter for single cells is the reproducibility. And as you can see, our repeat experiment demonstrates the stability of our platform. And under a sequencing depths of 20 to 50,000 metrics per cell, we are able to detect uh, more than 3,000 uh, genes for each individual cell. And this is quite exciting because you got a lot of information, so you can do a lot of biological studying. For example, using our platform, we are able to follow the dynamic uh, population changes of differentiating and blowing up stem uh, uh, cells. So you can see population-wise, you can see uh, this uh, cell will change uh, from this direction. Uh, and, and you can also look at it, how individual genes uh, is fluctuated during the differentiation processes. And more excitingly, by using another barcoding technology, we use barcode antibody so that we can sequence both protein and mRNA at the same time. So for the first time, we can see how protein expression is correlated with mRNA expression. Intuitively, uh, you will see that the mRNA expression is correlated quite well with protein expression. Indeed, from box solution analysis, you can see RNA uh, uh, results is uh, correlated well, quite well with the protein uh, expression. Unfortunately, when you look at a single cell resolution, you see that the correlation of mRNA uh, would not correlate with the protein uh, and demonstrating the heterogeneity of this single cell. That is indeed demonstrate the, 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 uh, the, the advantage of using multi omic for single cell uh, heterogeneous analysis. To, to, in order to, for us to analyze this big data, we also uh, uh, create some bioinformatic tools. Uh, for example, we developed a, a, a technology called NCOR, entropy subspace separation phase clustering for noise reduction, where easily realize the efficient feature subspace phase space, uh, uh, separation, ensuring high resolution uh, single cell uh, population uh, uh, analysis so that we can identify those real uh, cell population. 
So come back to our liquid biopsy. Uh, we developed a, a, a technology called Super CT, supervised cell type classifier framework for reliable cell type prediction by collaborating with uh, Professor Lin Wei at Baylor Research Institute. And this is a really, really exciting technology because basically when you capture uh, a, a cell and do a transcriptome analysis, based on the transcriptome information, you are able to predict a cell type or tissue origin of this CTC. One can imagine in the future, you can just drop one drop of blood from patient, run through our chip, and do sequencing from the sequencing information, we'll tell the doctor where the tumor site is uh, without doing harmful uh, radiation imaging and so on and so forth. And you can perform regularly because it's long invasive uh, 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 processes. And are really exciting with the progress in uh, uh, trying to push the goal uh, to clinical applications. So with this, I will summarize my talk. I show you the beauty of the microfluidics for discovering uh, specific uh, uh, ligands for CTC recognition. We also demo uh, a straight letter using synergistic approach. We are able to capture circulating so tumors the patient's blood with high sensitivity. We also use the microfluidic to uh, design microfluidic program for uh, single cell sequencing. Together with bioinformatic tools, we are able to predict tissue origin of those CTCs. So with this, I would like to thank uh, my uh, collaborators, especially my mentor and uh, uh, Paul uh, and uh, uh, Professor uh, Wei Hong Tan, Dick Zell, and Professor uh, 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 Zhong Chen-Tian, who is sitting in the audience and other collaborators, and funding agencies, and my uh, colleagues and students. With this, I would like to uh, say happy birthday to uh, Xiamen University again, and thank you all for your attention. Okay, very good. Uh, very glad to announce these members. Till now, we already have uh, uh, two, uh, 27 wow. thousand people online. Amazing. So it's quite amazing. So yeah, here we yeah welcome a question from outside here students. Oh, sorry, I didn't use this mic. Yeah, got too many, you know, stuff here. Yeah, so I'm uh, really glad to see that tune down. We have a lot of uh, audience online. We have uh, 27,000, yeah, audience. So it's quite a large numbers. And then now we open for the questions. Uh, we have um, several students here. Yeah, welcome. Raise your hands to ask the questions. Anyone here? Yes. Okay. Uh, thanks for your nice talk. This is Hao Bing from Peking University. I would like to know whether other new technologies can be combined to uh, incre improve the efficiency or, or decreasing the cost of this technology. Because in my mind, uh, maybe the cost of this uh, microfluid may be right, but the additional uh, detecting equipment may be it's expensive, so how to solve this problem? Okay, so your question is, uh, uh, is there any other technology that can, can combine with our technology to reduce the cost? Yeah, yeah. Right? Uh, yes, our uh, rigor is uh, trying to uh, uh, integrate with other technologies to, because cost is really sensitive in order for you to do clinical applications. And for example, we are trying to, uh, step, uh, trying to develop technology that can combine our CTC enrichment technology with the currently available RT-PCR or, or nucleotide mass spec so that they can uh, and do mutation analysis uh, really in a really uh, low cost and rapid way. Thank you. Uh, hello, Professor Yang. Thank you for your next talk. I'm Zohua Xiang from Peking University, and I wonder what are the main factors that influence the wide use of citizen in medicine? Um, you asked, so. so. Uh, what are the main factors main that factors, um, influence the wide use of CTC in medicine? Okay, um, so um, this is a really uh, critical question, and I've been uh, asked frequently. 
Um, so uh, for CTC uh, application in clinics, uh, one is the how do you efficiently uh, capture uh, those CTCs because they are rare. And so uh, we and others are trying to develop a new technology that can capture uh, CTCs in, the, in these early stages. So this is one. And, and, and second uh, one is that uh, in the past uh, decades, the people uh, are focusing on the Lambo CTCs. And actually, this is really misleading because the, the Lambo CTCs from each patient would vary from day to day because based on its condition. So uh, currently, we are trying to develop single cell sequencing technology or other molecule characterization methods so that you can get real molecule information from those CTCs so that you can guide. Uh, Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, here is the last question from New Zealand team. He's asking for, did you have uh, some real applications for your CTC technology? Yes. Um, thank you. Um, actually, we uh, have uh, uh, processed more than uh, 1,000 uh, uh, patient samples uh, uh, cases uh, uh, by collaborating with a different hospital. And, uh, and we actually uh, um, have some uh, uh, real uh, uh, applications. For example, in this uh, uh, case, uh, the patient with gastric cancer uh, with bone uh, metastasis, uh, we were able to uh, uh, enrich so CTCs and sequencing, so the guide the doctors to do uh, 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 to to choose the uh, accurate uh, uh, drugs for treatment. Okay, that's yeah. really great. Yes, uh, because many foreigners they couldn't you know uh, easily to scan the code, so they ask questions a little bit hard. So yeah, um, any of them sending the message to me directly. Yeah. Okay. Yes. <laughs> okay. Welcome. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, Chao Yu, yeah. So we have a certification for you okay. <laughs> for IKX. Actually, this was uh, uh, here. Yeah, this was a uh, you know a uh, certification for you to give a talk on IKX. Appreciate yeah your work at Canada World and the Universe. Thank you. Thank you, and thank you again for your invitation. Thank you. <laughs> okay, uh, super. Yeah, actually, Professor Yang was really a famous star in uh, chemistry field, and he is doing so many interesting work. So now we invited another speaker here. Yeah, another speaker is Professor Ming Hui Hong. He is from National University of Singapore. Actually, he is an alumni of Xiamen University. As a graduate many years ago, and he is doing a lot of you know famous work in photonics. And now he is one of the best scientists in this field. So, Professor Huang, are you ready? Please. Okay, here. Yeah, please turn on your microphone. Okay, can, yeah, can you hear me? Good, yeah, uh, yeah, I share my screen. Yeah, you can watch my screen now, right? Okay, good, good. Uh, dear Haixiang, thank you very much for your kind introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, friends and colleagues, uh, very good evening, very good morning, and also very good afternoon. Uh, let me use a few minutes to express my best wishes to Xiamen University for the centenary celebration. I am one of the Xiamen University alumni. I studied in physics department from year 1981 to 1988. I obtained my Bachelor of Science in 1985 and a Master of Science in 1988. My current achievements are attributed to the solid foundation being built in Xiamen University by my supervisor, Professor Liu Siyi and then Professor Shen Qihua, as well as other teachers, including Professor Lai Hongkai and also Professor Wu Sun Tao. I published my first paper in my life in the Journal of Xiamen University. Without your cultivation, 
it would be impossible for me to have my today. 向美丽母校厦门大学的恩斯前辈们致敬。I met my wife also in Xiamen University. We have the happy and the big family. 我和我太太是在美丽母校相识、相知、相爱的。感恩她的辛勤付出，我们一起打造着一个美丽、幸福的大家庭。那我的岳父岳母呢，也是母校的老师，所以说我既是厦大的儿子，也是厦大的女婿。感恩美丽母校厦门大学。Now let me start talk about my、uh, research recently on the development of the optical microsphere narrow scope from fundamental research to technology commercialization. The talk of my Uh, the online of my talk, including the optical microscope, to know our micro world, how to overcome the optical diffraction limit, microsphere narrow imaging in air and near field, and also microsphere narrow imaging in air and long contact mode. This is very important. The optical microsphere narrow scope, the technology commercialization, how to build the product. First, optical microscope to know our micro world. We use our eye to see this vivid world. If we want to see the beautiful birds at a long distance away, we need to use the long focusing lens camera. And I have a very good of the camera, Leiken Ku Pix P900. These are all the photos I took before. To see what is in our universe, we need to use space telescope. How we can see our micro world? We need to use a microscope. This is one of the typical microscope in the market. Microscope is the great invention in the world, and it has created a lot of the new knowledge and advance our science and technology. This our human health, our printing paper fibers, bacteria in our kitchen. And also sugar cube under our microscope. For optical scientists and engineers, how to overcome the optical diffraction limit is the mission for us to explore and challenge. Optical theorists tell us, working in far field, the minimum feature size can be seen by an optical microscope is about half of the wavelengths. And because the air absorption. Typically, we say the minimum current optical microscope we can see in air only 200 nanometer. We use lambda 400 nanometer as the reference, as a benchmark. Our human hair is about 100 micrometer, 500 times bigger than these 200 nanometers. Therefore, it raises one very challenging question: Could we fill this gap? In order to go to 10 nanometer, 200 nanometer, go down to 10 nanometer, the question here is: Could we fill this gap from 10 to 200 nanometer by optical microscope working in air, so that we can sense our nano world, we can see wireless, we can even see DNA. Of course. We can use SEM, TEM, AFM, and Unsom near field scanning optical microscope to see our nano structures. But all this system is very expensive and working in high vacuum, or in the near field. And in near field, the speed is very slow. Scientists and and this technology actually, I will say, they are a great invention. They also won quite a few of the Nobel Prize. Scientists put much efforts and keep challenge optical diffraction limit. And one successful recent story is a super result for recent microscope. In short, we call STEM. This invention won the Nobel Prize in chemistry in year 2014. It can see in air the resolution 30 nanometers, but they need to dot. The biomolecules with the fluorescent materials, the setup is quite complicated and also expensive. Now, let let me introduce our work. 
microsphere narrow imaging in air in near field by putting sitting a microsphere on the subject surface. The microsphere actually is one of the very unique optics. It's very small, tiny ball lens, five to 20 micron. Our human hair is 100 micron, five times smaller than our human hair. And we start to do the research by using microsphere starting from year 2000. We use microsphere combined with laser to achieve 30 nanometer surface patterning. From year 2007, we work closely with Professor Lini. He also is academician of a lawyer, engineering, uh, Academy of the Engineering in Lawyer Society in UK, Manchester University. We use the microsphere to do the narrow imaging. And we found that by putting the microsphere on the subject surface, we can see down to 50 nanometers. It's really a big technology breakthrough and invention. The resolution, 50 nanometer, lambda over eight. We use lambda 400 nanometer. So it means four times smaller than the optical diffusion limit. These are some more of the narrow imaging results. And it attracts many press release, newspapers report in BBC in some, some study and it takes time. And we further our research cooperations. And we combine the microsphere with the conventional confocal microscope. Typically, the conventional confocal microscope, the resolution is about 150 nanometer. It cannot see the 25 nanometer AO, the tiny holes the, here on the center, cannot see it. But the five micrometer diameter microsphere Coupling with confocal microscope, we can see the 25 nanometer AO template clearly. So we can achieve 25 nanometer the resolution. This is the resolution of the lambda over 16, eight times smaller than the optical diffraction limit. And these are the diamond structures we make for the final reasonable research. And each diamond size is about 95 nanometers and the gap is 38 nanometers. Under the conventional microscope, we see this five narrow dot as only one big dot because resolution is not high enough. You cannot distinguish them out. But with the microsphere confocal microscope, you, you, we can distinguish these five narrow dot clearly. However, this technology has the big problem is the microsphere is sitting on the subject surface. It's working as the contact mode. It means the subject and also the microsphere, the position is fixed, then cannot be adjusted. So it limits our imaging field size. And also because the microsphere will need to put on the subject surface, it is contaminating our sample surface. So, we come up with one of the questions. Can we develop microsphere narrow imaging working in air in lung contact mode? In year 2012, I formed a big research team in the US and we submit a white paper. And then after one year, and then we were select is from, I remember it's from 80 of the proposal, select as a 15 proposal. And then this 15 proposal, uh, uh, the team need to write the full proposal, 20 page, 20 page. And then through the review, very strategic review process, then we award competitive research project under the Singapore National Research Foundation for three years at five million sing dollar. So from year 2014 to 2016, we developed this technology. We published quite many papers and also we found a few patterns on optical microsphere nanoscope, working in air and in lung content mode. And these are some of the experiment results 
we use in focus ion beam to make the narrow features, the dots and the line. You see the gap is about 74 nanometer, 98 nanometer, less than 100 nanometers. This is SCA image. And under our optical microsphere nanoscope, we can this image very clearly. The resolution is a lambda over four, two times smaller than the optical diffraction limit. And we can further tuning our optical systems. We can even separate two narrow dots. Then the, the gap is about 25 nanometer. And then we can distinguish these two away. It's a resolution about 25 nanometer, lambda over 16, eight times smaller than the optical diffraction limit. And we prepare some more complicated patterns, nodes, flowers. The line width is about 50 nanometers. Such a small line width cannot be seen by the best microscope in the market. But with our optical microsphere nanoscope, we can clearly distinguish these 50 nanometer line width. It's the resolutions of lambda over eight, four times smaller than optical diffraction limit. And in order to show what we what we did is the long content mode, we take the video, then this is the video, and then we see our microsphere moving fast about the flower, the rose surface. So it shows that this is the narrow imaging, 50 nanometers in long contact mode. Long contact mode. Okay, let me, yeah, uh, one more time and then come back. Okay, we go to next one. Then we use our optical microsphere nanoscope to see actual industry sample. We go to see our industry friend, ask them to give us our sample. This is the magnetic head slide in our hard disk drive of the computers. And you can see, this is the pole and this is the base. Between the pole and the base, there is the gap. The gap size is 77 nanometer, three times smaller than 200 nanometer optical diffraction limit. And the best microscope can see it. But using an optical microsphere nanoscope, we can see the 77 nanometer gap clearly. This is a resolution of lambda over five, 2.5 times smaller than the diffraction limit. And then we also use of optical microsphere nanoscope to see our integrated circuit chip. This is the gap between the two lines. The gap distance is 150 nanometers, two times smaller than the optical diffraction limit. Then the best microscope can see it. And we used our optical microsphere nanoscope. We can distinguish these two lines out. So, the resolution is 100 nanometer, lambda over four, two times of the optical diffraction limit. Then we do the comparisons. With our comparison of our optical microsphere nanoscope with all the microscope available in the market. And in the aspects of resolutions, for our microsphere nanoscope, we can see the minimum size about 23 nanometers. And we do not need to doping any fluorescent material. We did not touch our sample because the sample cannot be touched. And then some of the sample metal semiconductor cannot be doped. And also we don't do any of the sample preparations and the acquisition time is very short. We can do the real time videoing. And also we don't need to do the image process. What I just show all the pictures never done the image process. All raw data. And then, but we have the challenge. Our optical microsphere nanoscope, the working distance in the micrometer scale. So, our optical microsphere nanoscope has the advantage 
of long contact mode. Then no need to have a sample, no have the sample damage. And then we can view the soft sample without pre-treatment of the sample. The resolution can go down to sub 100 nanometers for the semiconductor and the bio sample imaging. And then we're using the optical methods, optical means. Don't doping any sample, don't do any of the sample preparations. And all can do the in vivo imaging. And also working in the air, easy to be operate without special training. And also it's high speed imaging because what we did is one time capture one pictures. The picture size is two micron by two micron. If you're using the conventional best microscope, 200 nanometer resolution, you're scanning two micron and two micron, the image, you need to use 100 step. So our optical microsphere nanoscope, the speed much faster. And here have very interesting of the physics. We do a lot of fundamental research. We found that the physics actually behind our optical microsphere nanoscope is very complicated because our microsphere size is the five to 20 micron, 10 to 40 times of the lambda. The working distance is one to five micron, two to 10 times of lambda. The micro imaging, microsphere imaging actually is in the near field. The near field is our lambda over 10 and the far field more than 10 lambda. So it's what we are treating, we are imaging in this field between the far field and the near field, we call it Mesophere. There's a lot of new physics for us to explore. And then we're also in the process to modify the current optics theory. And because of the optical microsphere nanoscope, the high impact results, our team won the IES Project Engineer Achievement Award and our Asian Outstanding Engineering Achievement Award. Now, let me start to talk about the optical microsphere nanoscope technology commercializations. And this is the video. And last year, the China News Asia CNA, uh, like the, in Singapore, the, the, the central uh, TV station, interview us on the optical microsphere nanoscope. Force technology, its vision is clear. It wants to create a device that is 10 times better huh? than a microscope. At that scale, the nanoscope can be used to examine viruses, such as the one causing the COVID-19 outbreak, and even DNA. The company's key invention is a glass ball that's 1,000th the size of the one I'm holding here, that's half the width of a strand of human hair, and they want to make it one-tenth the size of that. And that's where investments into deep tech startups could come in handy. For the first two and a half years, the researchers have to put in their own money and also find supporters. I have one of the very good senior professor, one of the students, he invests me. He don't know our technology, but he trusts me. <laughs> so he invests me, so I'm very lucky. And also we have another, also another student, also invests us some, about 100k. So we have about near to about half a million there running. The project also received support from the National Research Foundation from 2014 to 2016 and was the first project under an accelerated program launched last year by the Institute of Engineers. Last October... And these are different versions of the optical microsphere nanoscope we developed since 2017, four years ago. And then last year, we are very lucky. We got the virtual capital investment. And I'm very happy that quite a few of my students successfully cash out after three years startup journey. And then they earn hundreds of thousands to millions of Singapore dollars from these technology commercializations. And since year 2017, when we spun off the false technology from NUS, we put much efforts to complete two cycles. One is prototyping evaluation cycles. We go through the prototype development, the field test, data correction, and the incubations. Then now we move to the mass production cycles that we, we form the team and then product development, improvement, and also market testing and then manufacturing plan, and also the product launch. And I have the great team with many strong patient students 
to success, to work closely together. And we attend many different kinds of the exhibitions and uh, low shows and also the competitions to showcase our technology and the prototypes. And this is the first version product we developed together with Opta Sigma, one of the Japan listing company, have a 45 years old history. And then we call this product Opto Nano 200. It's very compact and the size about 16 centimeter times 25 centimeter and the height is 50 centimeters. And Opto Nano 200 can achieve the imaging resolution in air and lung contact mode at resolution 137 nanometers. It was a global launch in California, USA on 18 November last year. The product now is already in the market. Let me show you two of the video of our Auto Nano 200. We want to find the smallest features of the standard sample. And then another, the next of the video. automatic. The optical microscope, the market now currently is about 3 billion US dollar. And then with our optical microsphere nanoscope invention, we strongly believe this market can be much bigger, can be increased a few more times, over 10 billion US dollar. So in conclusions, the optical microscope is enhancing our capability to know our micro nano world. The microsphere is a wonderful optics for us to distinguish tiny features at 50 nanometers 
and a 25 nanometer if you couple with a confocal microscope. An optical microscope and nanoscope can push our optical imaging cap capability from 200 nanometer now to 25 nanometer by working in air and in lung content mode. And then we, our first product, Opto Nano 200, is already in the market, resolution 137 nanometer. The Opto oh. Nano 100, resolution sub 100 nanometer will be in the market very soon. And of course, coupling with polarization, phase shift, enhanced signal to noise ratio. There's many space for us to improve our narrow emission performance. But in the fundamental, we still keep continue our fundamental research. Aiming at the 10 nanometer and beyond, optical image in air, very important, lung content mode. By the microsphere, compound lens, confocal design, multi-photon absorption, and even engineering to make structure on our so small microsphere. Okay, in the end of the talk, let me introduce two general OEA and then OES because I'm the general executive editor-in-chief. The OEA we'll get is uh, first impact factor, least zoom. The impact factor will be slightly about 10. The OES is a new general, aiming at even higher impact factor and more on the fundamental physics. You are one welcome to submit your manuscript to our genders. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minghui. Very nice talk. Actually, a Thank lot you. of questions here. Uh, first, I will ask from the audience. He's very asking good. for, you know, how's the fundamental limitation about your technology? And uh, is very that possible question. to replace SEM? Good questions. Actually, uh, uh, you know, in our laboratory, we already can see, you know, uh, 25 nanometers. And already we are in the planning to replace one part of the SM, SEM market because we can do it in the air. And then also, you know, uh, SEM, you need to have electron bomb out of the sample. You are damaged the sample. For our optical microscope, we don't touch any of samples. So this is uh, one way. The another is we are in the progress, we go down to 10 to 25 nanometer. That is uh, two of the very important challenge we want to solve. You know, we enlarge the image about four times, only four to five times. We are in the process to do the research using the microsphere compound lens setup. Recently, we found a pattern. The pattern finally and then quickly brought over by the company. And the paper will come out very soon. We use this new design. We can increase the magnification from four to five times to 10 times. So we, we are strongly believe we can go down to around 10 nanometers. So if we can go to the 10 nanometers, we should replace at least half of the SEM market. Okay, that's why we are real revolution. So this yes. question was from SUST Gao Hui. Uh, yeah. Uh, now I want to have uh, some question from all this here. Anyone can please raise your hands. Hello, Professor Hong. Thanks for a nice talk. I'm Thank Ji you. Wan from Beijing University. And I have a question. Uh, compared with the real shape of the item, the micro sphere enlarged image is uh, will will deform from the real one. So, is there any way to correct the difference between the real one and the uh, image? Well, very good questions. And then we really we found that, for example, we have two you know, the dot. The dot size is uh, the gap is when we go to the twenty five nanometer. The actually the image we are shared, right? It's because of optical diffraction. Very yes. easy, very clear. And actually we can do the AI, you know, do the Lengu Zilen. And then we do the theoretical calculation, predict, and then we calculate it back. Then we add in the calculation, we can, you know, restore the, the original shape of the object. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Doing the calculation and then we can get back. Okay. Other questions? Okay. Uh, hello, Professor Hong. Uh, thank you for the interesting talk. I'm Li Mingmiao from Peking University. Mm -hmm. uh, I noticed that you, uh, you showed uh, the working distance is one microns 
And yes. so I wonder whether it requires the uh, high, high stability for working placement. For example, uh, any tiny vibration or the surface is not uh, horizontal or the glass substrate is not very smooth in microscope. And I, and I also want to know how does it control uh, price, uh, uh, the focusing, uh, focusing distance? Uh, okay, is it by hand or auto control? Okay, thank you. Okay, so you have two questions. The first question is, you know, the working distance. The second is, you know, how to do the auto focusing. Actually, is, uh, I just show you all the video. It's all auto focusing. And we, we make one of the programs. And then we calculate the contrast from the contrast difference. And then we do the auto focusing. This is already, you know, uh, successfully applied in our product. The first one, the, the first question is about the working disk is really, really is the challenge because, you know, any of the microscope, if you want to have see really small, the working distance is, uh, is uh, shorter. So this is the big problem we are facing. So now we are developing the other methods. We are using the compound lens and then to make the complicate of the lens so that we can get the longer working distance. So it should be able to be solved. But so far, our microsphere, the distance about one to five micron. So, you know, we use very high resolution of the nano stage. Use the stage, for example, one micron, if the stage resolution is a 50 nanometer, so you have about 150 nano times 100. So you have the 100 steps. Okay, each step 50 nano. So you have a lot of room for you to control. Yeah, actually, so you know, in the laboratory, you can set up system very simple. And then your supervisor have a lot of the ground, just put the money inside. But if go to the product, go to the product, then must be reliable. So this is the another big challenge in the technology commercializations. Completely different on the fundamental research. Yeah, this is the engineering work, it's the technology. Yeah, so we need to work very closely with, you know, the some of the international famous company who has a very strong industry manufacturing background. They can provide us the best quality of the product. Then your product can have the market, and then your product can earn profit. This one is very important. Otherwise, any of the technology, no matter how great it is, and then it will be close. Yeah. Dr. Hong, here is a following question, you know, to yeah. you from audience. It's okay. asking how you balance for the research and for the commercialization. Okay, good question. <laughs> okay, um, you know, um, uh, why I want to do the, you know, commercialization, that is, you know, uh, is because I got my full professor in year 2014 in the US. Then after I was promoted to full, full professor, I asked you, ask my, myself one question, what I want. Actually, I have the, about 500 papers. I have the nature. I have nature, a lot of nature paper, chemistry review, a lot of papers. And then I'm telling myself, if I keep going on this about in the US another 50 years, of course, my paper can increase up, up to 800, 800 papers. They say, this is my life. But in my lab, not only the microscope, we have many other technology. If we can make you this success, I can make my student rich. For example, one of my students, he catch up one, close to two million sing dollars, around each one million. And then it's not means the money, it's a success for the student. And then if a student is a big good example, and then we I can attract a lot of very good students will come to join me. So and also our research, every time we apply the ground, I got the CRP, five million, ten million. If after five years, three years, I only generate 100 paper, 200 paper, and then project finish, I apply again. So what is the point? No impact to the society, no impact to the economy, right? So I tell myself, I need to do something. So from year 2015, I tell my student, 
every actually previous time every year in my team I can publish about every year about 30 papers. I told them half of it. I need to squeeze half a time to do commercialization. So in these few years, and we go in this direction, quite a lot of students also do together. We found that, you know, this is the right direction for us to go. We need to have balance. Fundamental research finish and then need to do the prototype. Then convince the industry to take it. We see coming, take it over. Then we coming back to do the more fundamental research. And also when we work together with industry, we also know what is the new problem in the industry. And then it's a very good direction for our fundamental research. So this is very important. The both very important. In Chinese, every time I say, you know, uh, 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 we need to, in Chinese, we, we, we say, if we need to uh, do the fundamental research and also the technology commercialization together. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I hope let me also to go this direction. Yeah. Audience online, we have a 41,000. Oh, 41,000. Yes, wow. sir. Ming Hui, now you are a superstar. Yeah. So, thank you very uh, much. Thank you very much. As, uh, thank you very much. As, you know, we traded it. We deliver a virtual certification to you. Thank you. Great Thank you very much. Thank yeah. you very much. Proud of you. Yeah. So Thanks. we move on. Yeah, we will introduce Professor Zhong Qing Tian from Xiamen University. He introduced, you know, the history of engineering in Xiamen University. Yeah, Professor Tian, please. That is okay. Thank you. Thank you, Alice. Um, it's truly my great honor and pleasure to give a very short introduction about the faculty of engineering and technology and nanoscale science and technology at Xiamen University uh, in this uh, special occasion. Um, because I only have uh, 10 minutes or less, so I, I just give a very brief introduction about Shaman University, that was named as a, a more university in the beginning. And so our university founder uh, is Tan Ka Kim, and who is uh, um, truly a very famous overseas Chinese. And so our university is the first university uh, founded by overseas Chinese in the history of modern education in China. And in the past century, our university have evolved and developed into a very uh, and top, one of the top university as in China as listed among the national level A university in the double first class initiate. And as you can see, after hundred years, our building still looks uh, great, and that you can see one of the. Uh, spirit maybe exists inside this building. And our university is also one of the most beautiful university in China and because it's located in the southeast coast. And Xiamen is the city. Sorry, Xiamen is an island city, an international port city. And as you can see, we had uh, Three weeks ago, we had a centenary celebration in Xiamen University, and this is a celebration night, very beautiful. And so many um, alumni and students just joined together. We also had a centenary and celebration issued from several top international journals, reflecting that uh, Xiamen University has a global impact. And I always ask myself and my student and young colleague, what is the root and soul of Xiamen University? Because uh, this is different from culture. Culture may be changed after several 
10 years. However, water is the deepest um, root and soul of Xiamen University. So we have to think about what is the uh, um, um, influence uh, or, or what is the spirit Mr. Tang Ka King, our university founder, um, gave us. He really left some profound legacies and which has been passed down through generations, of course, including myself. And as you can see that um, Tang Ka King's science uh, award now is the second highest prize in China, just after the state. Uh, our um, country's uh, science and technology award. So why? And as you can see here, he went in the US, the College of Chemistry in the UC Berkeley has named the hall, the building as a Tang King Hall. And uh, from Singapore dollar, you can, you can see picture of Tang Ka King. So he must be, let, he, he must left some spirit, not only to Xiamen University, but to all the people of the world. And uh, the second figure, I think, in the history of Xiamen University is President Han um, Sa Ben Dong, or Pen Tong Sa in, in English. And uh, he took uh, the president position in 1937 in the period of uh, resistance war against the Japanese invasion. Then later, the Second World War. So he devoted himself wholeheartedly to the university and established in that time three departments, civil engineering, electromechanical engineering, and aviation engineering. And some people ask him why our university now just completely ruined. And uh, why do you want to educate uh, such uh, students? Uh, he said, I firmly believe that China will win the war. And we need those uh, people to rebuild our country. And we need uh, our Air Force to protect our country. So this is the spirit. I think. And uh, so in that time, in spite of extremely hard condition, President and, and Professor Pen Tong Sa, and he just, uh, and, and I think because in that time there was no electricity in um, Changting, a mountain town far away from Xiamen because the shaman was occupied by the Japanese army. So that uh, no electricity. So he just detect, disassemble his own car, then use the engine to provide the electricity in the evening for student to start. And the student in that time were cultivated uh, during this uh, Changting period. And as you can see, um, the successful rate for the student uh, was very high because uh, they really treasure the value of um, as a student in that time because uh, in most area of, um, and the student, all the young people cannot get educated well at least. So I think this is the spirit or this is the soul of Xiamen University. And as you can see here, the, uh, our university son, who uh, that was made just uh, in the beginning of the, uh, in the uh, year of uh, 1921. Knowledge is limited and love is unbound. So we still sing this song uh, just for a century without changing one, a single word. 
because I know some university motto and university song uh, have been changed in the history, but our university keep the university motto. And as you can see here, sorry, the, as you can see here, pursue excellence and uh, strive for perfection. And so these two indeed just form the root and soul of university. And I'm also thinking maybe gratefulness is, could be the third part of the soul of our university because uh, all these students, generation by generation, really deeply appreciate their teacher, their president. So we have a very strong academic achievement over a century. And as you can see, more than 60 academicians of the Chinese Academy of Science and the Chinese Academy of Engineering have studied and worked at our university, and including Lu Jiaxi, Chen Jinglun, and Ming Guilong, who just passed, I think, one week ago. So, so many people just appreciate their great contribution. And regarding the Faculty of Engineering and Technology, we have uh, an, let me read that. We, we, we have uh, six schools and one department and three research institutes. Take a, well, thank you again. Okay, so let's move on. Um, we form three platforms related to manufacturing energy and information. As you can see, we try to just carry out uh, the soul of our university and try to comprise um, the force from different schools and different and, and different and institution to just get together, to work together in order to uh, strive for perfection and pursue for excellence. And he, I would like to just give one example. Professor Wen Ko was a student in the Changting area, and uh, he established Pentong Sa, our um, president name, Institute of Micro and Nanoscience and Technology. So as you can see, they just feel grateful to the president and their teacher and establishes some um, um, highly advanced research center for the university. And based on their uh, establishment, we have uh, just a good achievement in the field of nanoscience and technology. As you can see here, we published uh, several good paper in nature and science. And uh, here you can see our university published the first uh, paper related with the nanoscience in 1985. Then the number goes up and as well as the citation number, which is over 100,000 times now. And I'm very glad to inform you that two years ago, our province and city and Shaman University decided to jointly establish a provincial lab, the first provincial lab in our province. And uh, after discussion, we decided to name this uh, provincial lab as a Tankaking lab. So as you can see, that is uh, simple for the position of this lab. We have received uh, over 1 billion RMB for this one, and we will have uh, 2 billion later. So we really get the first uh, uh, and or next generation facility for our lab, including low noise lab, and with uh, excellent or outstanding performance, as you can see here, from one to 10 hertz, we have uh, one micrometer per second 
and uh, with uh, 10 to 100 and hertz, we have uh, 100 nanometers. So the, um, the, the, the parameter for this lab is superb. So finally, I would like to express our gratefulness to the organized, especially Alice, for organizing such an excellent um, forum uh, of uh, ICAM X talks. And I also look forward to your visit and the future collaboration. Thank you. Okay, great, Professor Tian. Thanks for your uh, wonderful introduction to all this information of Xiamen University. We really appreciate it. And now we all know the history, glory history of uh, this university. I think it's wonderful. Yeah, based on this time, we will start our uh, panel discussion. So we will have, uh, you know, uh, five panel list on the, on the stage. So Professor Tian, uh, Guo Hang, Wan Qian, Zhou Wei, please. Yeah. Okay, so get, get that part a little bit. Yeah. Uh, okay, don't get those so close. So move a little bit. Yeah, put one chair here. Okay. Yeah, everyone sit down, please. Zhou Wei, yes. Yeah. So, uh, it's great. We Okay, now we move to the uh, last part. Professor Zhou Wei joined our, us for the panelists, and uh, uh, Guo Hang from Peking University, the PhD students. We have undergraduate students. Wen Qian was uh, from Xiamen University for this panel discussion. Now my first question, yeah, we give a Professor Tian a break, okay? <laughs> Take a break. My first question will ask uh, Professor Zhou Wei. So as you are a young professor, yeah, pretty young working here and uh, doing excellent work, uh, can you introduce a little bit about that? What your work and, uh, you know, how about uh, the department you are in charge? Thank you, Professor Zhang. And... Uh, just the uh, perfect thing to say, Xiamen University not only provide uh, uh, good, uh, a beautiful campus, but also uh, give us a good research platform and uh, working environment. Uh, actually, uh, my nano research field, uh, research field is a key research field in Xiamen University. Professor Tian uh, and uh, uh, Faculty of Engineering Te uh, Technology also give great support to our uh, young, 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 te young teacher. Uh, we can get some of uh, funding and get some of good lab support. So uh, we study in Shan University is really happy. Thank you. Okay, very good. Yeah. Uh, very great. As a uh, faculty, we already see that uh, Professor Zhou and uh, Professor Yang, you know, they both are uh, from different department, but uh, they grow up very well. Like uh, one word where famous is widely growing here, right? In Xiamen University, in this 1,000 years anniversary, this word will really become a hard word, right? So I uh, hope everyone was growing up widely here yeah so now we have the students who is widely growing now as Wen Qian can you say something about your life in Xiamen University um, I'm a freshman in Xiamen University and I set it as my goal when I was a high school student to enter Xiamen University um, our school has gone through a century of history uh, I have also lucky enough to grab a chance to participate in the 100 year celebration party on April the 6th. And Xiamen University for me is full of freedom and full of love. Our teachers are very sweet. When we get hungry, when we rehearsing, they will provide us very delicious dessert. And when we got depressed, they will always be our solid backing. So because of its kind-hearted classmates and very sweet teachers, Xiamen University is a paradise for me. Wow, that's a paradise for the students. 
Yeah, so happy to see uh, hear that words, right? Yeah. So we have another student was from uh, Peking University. So is in Beijing. So uh, your first time here, Guo Hang, right? Yeah. Okay. Can you tell us your feeling about Xiamen? Mm, before I come, I heard the Xiamen University is one of the most beautiful university in China. When the HFE NAMS International Conference is held at the Xiamen University this year, I do not hesitate to submit my paper. So when I step into the Xiamen University, I'm deeply attracted by the salary here, and I found that the people here are very friendly. Um, uh, when I participated in the HFE NAMS conference, uh, there are many students from Xiamen University signed up for, uh, for volunteers in order to take part, take part in the academic faith. As the volunteers, they not only finish their work uh, very seriously, but also join in the academic discussion. The pursuit of, the, uh, of this uh, uh, academic, academic, academic uh, research is exactly what we young students need. So I think Xiamen University not only has a beautiful environment, but also, um, but also a good, uh, good learning uh, atmosphere, which is inseparable from her centuries of accumulation. Um, so uh, I'm, re I'm really, really honored to be here at Xiamen University during the uh, century celebration. So thank you. It is great. So, are you going to work in here like, in the future? <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's my question to Professor Tian. So, yeah, uh, what's the future for the you know strategy? How to attract all these talented to in Xiamen and to keep all these talented in the campus? Well, as a team of uh, That's okay. um, faculty of engineering and technology. And I must say that uh, we need a lot of uh, talent uh, and young people to join us. So we established Kanka King Lab, which is the, I believe is the first class lab in, in China or in the world. We try extremely hard. We try to establish not only just a first class instruments, but also first class culture, which is important for yeah. <laughs> uh, young people to grow up. Yeah. I think the young people came here. Yeah, I see so many students here are very excited on this conference. I see that all the young professors, even someone still established very well, they came here, they say, I don't want to leave. <laughs> I think that's the best words we want to hear, right? Yeah, we hope we can attract more and more people come here. That's a very nice, beautiful place and a very nice cultures and the full of the nice professors, full of the talented students, and it's full of the best food. <laughs> well, the, well I, I do hope they are not attracted just by Oh. Beautiful <laughs> campus and uh, and the food, yeah. and I I think we need to just explore and find out what is the soul of your university. Yeah. It's important not just for Xiamen yeah. University, but maybe for all university in China or yes. over the world. I, I do agree that actually I myself was an example. Yeah. So though I love the you know delicious food, I love to get everywhere for sightseeing. But I stick with Xiamen University is because becomes the people. Yeah. Professor Winko was the first professor I met here. That time he already almost 80, but he hosted the first con international conference for the micro and nano field in China. So that time I attracted many international scholars come over. In 2002. Yeah, 2002, that, that time I still very young. 
yeah. But to the, in you know twenty years, I always recall myself that you know memory. So Doctor Ko, yeah, leading all of us, you know, go to this field and、uh, try to you know push us to the international stage. So that's very important. Then after Professor Ko, he really talks many times about、uh, President Ben Tong Sa. Then that time I. So this name was not familiar, but I go double check all the history. I think, oh my God, that's one of the best president of the university in China, even in the whole world. He really, you know, push, yeah, devote all of himself and push the university up, and also push all this education in the hardest time. No matter that's、uh, you know exactly a right word in China that's the most hard work hard time yeah but he educated so many students and in the right field in the right way so all this really deliver us a message we should continue this way yeah we should continue do the best. I think the word in the video, yeah, the last words is the most important for all of us. A new century is right start. We should devote all we have, right, to pass on the touch and to go forward. So I'm so glad to have all of you here, you know, for this ceremony of、uh, ICAX for Xiamen University. I think this was a start. We will go ahead, try our best. Thank you, all of you. Okay, time fly. Yeah, it's almost time. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So、uh, this was the、uh, end of the IKX today. So next、uh, May, we we will next week we will start our May session. So we have、uh, four very famous scientists that will get on the stage. So all of us will give a wonderful talk, and also all of us will. For this panel discussion, deliver the best message to the young scientists, to the students all over the world. And the next week is Nicholas Peppers, who is from uh, uh, the University of Texas and Austin. He's the best,、uh, you know, professors for drug delivery and for the medicine and the paramedic applications research. So next week we will have a.、Uh, Very wide, you know, international team on the stage.、Uh, Maria from Spain will be the ex challenger, and Gu Zhen, yeah, was、uh, now is in Zhejiang University, will be our panelist, and Professor Paul will be the moderator. So looking forward to see you next week. I can ask every Friday, waiting for you online. Thank you so much. Okay, 谢谢大家，谢谢大家。